Hey guys, thanks for joining me, and if you like what you see, please subscribe. Hello, welcome to Sharp Ends, peoples. Today, I'm going to be talking about the Sing Cut Serene. I'm going to be tearing this apart and putting it back together again. This doesn't need it, but I just wanted to see what the inside looked like. And inside, a, I think this is a $46 knife. This is a D2 knife. I've done a first impressions and unboxing of this video. Check it out. I definitely talk highly about it, and I'm going to be doing a review of this. Uh, I wanted to go ahead and tear it down, though. A uh, couple of things I'll point out about it that I really love, though, really fast before I start tearing it down is the button lock is incredible. The action is great. As long as you don't press it all the way in really tightly, you just kind of put it. It's great. It flicks open. Great. Action is awesome. The blade is super, super sharp. The scales are really well-rounded, made out of aluminum. Pocket clip is reversible. It's got this nice lanyard pin instead of the usual hole, which I really appreciate and like. I like how the thumb studs come into this little notch here and stay out of the cutting plane. Really, really cool. Nice jimping on top. So this is a great, great knife to have. Uh, and the ergonomics on this and the whole, like the whole banana shape along the whole edge. I just really appreciate that. It's, it's really nice knife. I mean, this is a phenomenal budget knife. So I'm going to tear this down and take a look at it. All of this hardware I've already checked is a T8. That includes the P pivot. That's pretty cool. So um, I'm going to go ahead and take this apart. I use Wahoo bits uh, for it. Uh, so right off the bat, I can tell you that this is not locking. Uh, I just discovered that, which means I'm going to need a uh, I'm going to need the other T8 that I have to keep it from free spinning. And. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and have to use two of these. I think that these are free spinning. So that is one knock, but it's a budget knife. It's usually on more any any kind of knife that's a little bit more expensive than this. I'm going to close this so I don't cut myself. Um, any knife that usually has a little on the inside part has a, a it has a thing to keep it from free spinning. A little notch cut out of it that sits inside the scale. These are linerless, I believe. That might, that's interesting too. You know, this is nice and linerless. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo, this is harder than I thought it was going to be. All right, there we go. I think there's a lot of Loctite on this too. Sometimes with Loctite, you want to just take, a, if it's too much. I, I, now, I've always been able to break it, but you just want to be really careful that you don't break the Loctite. Uh, when, while you're breaking the Loctite, you strip this, the screw head. Um, so sometimes it's beneficial to take a hair dryer and to blow on it, warm it up and that, and that will release the Loctite. Uh, there's a little spring. So what I need to watch out for is when I take the button out, I need to make sure that I don't accidentally lose a little spring, which gives the button lock its action. Maybe this is out. Oop, it, it is out. Okay, so I spinned it too much. All right, so the screw itself is on the clip side. I'll need to remember that. I'm going to put that over there, and I'm going to put down my hardware in order to keep track of everything. I'm going to push this uh, pivot out. Any kind of pointy tool will do good. I like to use this watch uh, bar tool. I'm going to open it now, and now the spring has come out because it's a little loose in there now. Uh, all right, so that, I'm having a little trouble. I'm not going to force it, so what I'm going to do now is take out the back spacers. Hopefully the back spacers aren't free spinning. Well, they are free spinning, but sometimes if you just do one, it, yeah, it's going to come off for me. I'm taking off the lock side of this. That's gonna be the easiest way to do this. I'm not gonna take the backspacers off the scale side or the right-hand side, right? <clears throat> I'm taking these off and I'm keeping them in order. You do see a little bit of Loctite on here. And actually the pivot, yeah, it has some white Loctite. So that's, I think, some the higher Loctite for that. And now this should come off. And there's the spring, and there are the washers. 
So I'm going to put the spring up there. And this is linerless, which means that there's not a subsidiary liner inside of here. Uh, some knives have the scales and then the scales are, and the scales are the handles. The scales have a liner in here in which a lot of the hardware lives. This is aluminum, so they didn't have to do that. It's not milled out on in the inside, but it doesn't need to be because it's aluminum and it's already super light. Uh, these bearings are totally fine, but you're going to notice the action. I'm going to notice at least the action is going to be a lot better once I oil this correctly. I'm going to take some isopropyl alcohol and some Q-tips, and now I'm going to clean this out. Let's see what is up with these washers. Oh, okay. So there is a... So instead of running just on the aluminum, they have steel washers in here. That is great. And you can see that they actually have a, some where the bearings have been running against it. It's already started to make a track. Okay. And on the other side, it's just still clean and flat. And I'm just taking some alcohol on the tip of this and I'm cleaning them off. And I'm going to take some of the alcohol here and I'm going to do that. Oh, and by the way, the pin for the lanyard has come off and I just want to make sure I don't lose that. These washers are directional. By that, I mean they're cage bearings and the bearings here are inside of a track that's pressed in and that flat side there is the side that goes next to the blade. So I just need to remember that too. This is the stop pin right here. It will come out, so you need to be careful about that as well. That stop pin keeps the blade from going too far backwards and is one of the parts that will break if you try to um, if you try to use this for splitting wood or something or batoning with it. So you never baton with a, with a blade like this, obviously. And then the next thing I want to do is go ahead and, and wash off where the bearings have been running against the blade and the inside pivot hole and all this this little indent right here is where the stop pin rests and this right here is where the button lock goes okay and then I'm gonna take the pivot and clean that and then we're gonna start putting this back together not very dirty at all. Uh, I've only had it a couple of weeks and I've been using it, but not exclusively. Um, cool. So while this is a part, um, I think that this is really nicely machined. It's obviously all done by machine, but uh, you know, it's, it's very well done. Uh, I'm not going to worry about putting lubricant between the washer and the scale. That's fine. That doesn't need to roll or move. What's giving it the nice action is going to be the washers. What lubricant am I going to use for this? I am going to use KPL Lite for this. A little bottle of this will last you forever. The other option that you can get, which is much cheaper, is Hops Number 9. You can get that on... Uh, it, this is really good. It's got a nice needle applicator. You can get that on Amazon very cheaply. I think a bottle of this costs you $8, and these guys cost uh, about twice that. This has a nice needle applicator, too. So I'm going to put just a little bit on this washer here. And then I'm gonna put this down with the lipped part of the bearing facing down and the flat part of the washer facing toward the blade. I am not going to lubricate the button. Uh, that will, if I were to lubricate the button and how it goes together, that would, would create lock stick. All right, I'm gonna put this washer back in and I can see from where the tracks are, the snails, are on the washer that this was the side that was up and I'm going to keep that orientation the same so I don't have to worry about it. You don't want to use too much lubricant. Lubricant does two things. It makes your knife run smoother. I just need a couple of drops there and it'll it'll spread itself. It also, um, any kind of debris or anything that gets in there, it'll kind of trap it in the liquid and keep it from ruining your bearings. And again, this is a free spitting pivot. And as you can see, there's no D slot. There's usually like a little notch here and that would just go inside. So that's one knock on this. But again, 
this is a uh, very cheap knife. It's interesting though, it is a cheap knife, but it's not built cheaply. Like, I think there's a distinction there. This is made really darn well. It's... Oh, interesting. Am I doing that incorrectly? Does it come over here? Yeah, all right. So the, the, in the, uh, so not the screw part, but the, the holes are different on both sides, so you can't mess it up, which is great. The hole over here is too small to accept this. It only goes in one direction. So there's that. I think that that's the case. And now I'm going to try to put this back together. And I need to try to put this back together in such a way, and this is where it's going to be tricky with a button lock, that I get all the pieces together and... Uh, I get it to snap together correctly. And then this button also needs to sit correctly uh, with the blade. Um, which is interesting because I would technically want this to be over here because that's going to make my life easier. Is it really directional? I guess so. All right. So that's going to add a complicating factor to it. Okay, one more thing I don't want to forget is I want to put a little bit of... Uh, oops, this is the heavy. I don't want to put heavy on there. I want to use light. I want to use a little bit of the light KPL in the side, the pivot here too. And I'm going to use the needle to spread it around a little bit. See if I can remember how to do this. So I'm going to put the but the button lock rides in here, I believe. And I'm gonna put the button lock here. There we go. Now it's in its little home. And then I'm going to take a little bit of the KPL. And even though I put some, I'm just putting some on my face right there. Put some right there. I think I forgot to do it on that side. And then now this is the tricky part. I need to put this over on top with the spring inside there. And I need to get the stop pins aligned. And I need to remember to put the lanyard pin in here. There's the lanyard pin. I'm going to put this together with a knife extended. With it closed, it's going to be too hard to do. I just know that from experience. The pivot, the hole, the button lock isn't quite lining up with its hole. I need to be careful with that. So this is the fitzy, futzy bit. All right, that fell apart. Let me try again. I'm going to try this with the blade closed this time, see if that I get a better result though. Pin's still there. And I'm doing that because this button lock wasn't wanting to sit in its groove too well, and now it's locked into its place. Okay, so yeah, that's the way you want to do it, I believe. And now I just need to get the pivot back in. Oh, lost the lanyard hole, the lanyard pin. Now 
Not that I need it, not that I care about it, but might as well keep it there. That sounded good, except for the blade is not sitting correctly inside of there. And that's because the button lock isn't getting all the way in. There we go, snap together, great. So it was a little bit of futzing and jiggling and now it's together. So uh, now I'm going to use a little bit of Loctite on this and I, you need a, some kind of small applicator for this. Again, I'm going to use this, but any kind of pin or bobby pin or something like that would work. The way that I do it is I take a little bit of the uh, light Loctite and I put it on the inside of the threads. All right, so now the Loctite is in there. Oop, stupid magnet. This is free spinning again, so I'll need to use both of my T8s to get this uh, fully tight, but I should be able to, with my finger, just get it at least finger tight in there to keep the button lock from disengaging. And then I'm gonna flip it over. Yeah, all right, is it together enough now? Almost. And then I'm going to take a little bit more of the Loctite and I'm going to put it in the standoff holes. You get two standoffs for this, which is pretty typical how they put these knives together. Most pocket knives have these standoffs unless it has a full back spacer, which you know, once you see a full back spacer, the price automatically goes up. It costs a lot more. One thing I'll also point out is that this is all T8 hardware, which is really cool. I might have already said that at the beginning, but usually the pivot is uh, greater. So usually these back spacers are something like T6, and then the pivot will be like a T8, um, which isn't a big deal. It just means you have to change out your bit, but it's much more convenient to have everything be the same. And having a T8 on the back spacers is a nice little, that's pretty awesome for a budget knife. Right, those are in there. With Loctite, once this is all together, I'll want to leave this knife alone for a while. Let the Loctite actually um, dry and lock. And this time I'm gonna use, all right, so now this tightens up pulls everything together, and that might be too tight. Let's test it out and see, and then we'll adjust that. I'm gonna close my alcohol so it doesn't all evaporate on me. Just a little bit too tight. Just a smidge too tight. You don't want to lock down the bearings so the wheels aren't rolling at all. The wheels want to do their work, right? That's why it's good to use Loctite because it's not going to be fully tight. Oh yeah, action's already smoother. I mean, it was smooth out of the box, don't get me wrong, but... So that's basic maintenance. That is very fiddly to get the button lock and everything aligned back up, especially the... Um, you see this little part right here? The, of the button lock that goes into a little hole in the scale and getting that lined up with a pin at the same time is hard all i will say about that is you have to be a little futzy and you have to really concentrate on getting those in first sometimes it's best to just ignore the lanyard pin thing uh and this uh, and and just get this in first and then get a pair of pliers and while you're holding this you can then get this in and snap it the rest of the way shut So that's it. That's the tear down and put together of the Serene. Action is very nice now. And I'm going to let the Loctite go ahead and harden that way. And everything's lined up nicely and put back together well. All right, thanks guys. Thanks for that long video. If you're still with me, I really appreciate it. And if you've made it this long, you should definitely like and subscribe, right? All right, guys. See you next time on Sharp Ends. Bye-bye now.